There's a man back in a head coaching role in the NFL, formerly of the Bears, the University of Illinois. He's been coaching for, I don't know, like 50 years at this point. <laughs> yeah. Signed, beard, delivered. New head coach of the Houston Texans, Lovey Smith. Yeah. How about it, man? Hey. How's everything? How you doing? Thank you for coming in. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. God, that beard looks good. Yeah. Wow. Clean. Uh, if you want to put on a headset, you can. It's up to you. AJ Hawk will be in the camera. He's in Ohio. He, I don't know if you know uh, AJ or not, but uh, yes, I do. yeah, you do. You know AJ. The Bears, obviously, the rivalry goes a long way. You now, okay, are being tasked with being the head coach of a program that seems to be in quite a turnover. Now, last year you guys were able to win games. This year, there's a lot of turnover. How excited are you to be back in that seat? And what do you kind of look at the next couple months here as we get ready for the season? Pat, there's 32 of these jobs, so very excited <laughs> about it. Um, you're right, we did some good things last year. Uh, football has been my life forever, and to continue to be able to continue to do it, um, so many great relationships throughout, and to you know come down to Houston, a new group group of guys, and uh, you know I'm a Texas boy too, so high school football in Texas and then get a chance to lead your professional football team. It's pretty special. A lot of work to be done, we realize that, but uh, the process has started. Only one Super Bowl champion every year. And the fact that you know, you go from Chicago and then you go to college, and everybody's like, wait a second, is he gonna stay? And then you come back to the NFL. What, did you learn anything in your time down there? Or were you like, I need to get back to the NFL while you're down well, there? Well, a part of that too. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think every year you coach and um, you learn something. You know, different athlete, young athlete. Um, there's a lot of other things that go along with coaching college football, just not football. You know, just the period of coaching football all day, as much as you want to grind just on it, uh, that's what the NFL gives you. And to be able to get back in it, you know, I learned an awful lot. You know, it's a different college game. You know, on the defensive side of the football, uh, no huddle offenses. You know, don't really care an awful lot about uh, – you know, the quarterback, well, not, I should say an awful lot about him. It's just that quarterback run oriented offenses, yeah. a little bit different. But to get back into the NFL, um, it's been pretty special. And last year, even though we lost a lot of games, um, there's a lot of, you know, and for me to move into this role and having a chance to be with the players last year, feel like I have a, you know, step on it, staff wise too, you know, Pat. You know, one of the guys, you know, being able to get Pep Hamilton. Yeah, you know, Pep, I huh? know Pep, yes. You know, uh, George Warhop, you know, some of the older coaches that I've had a history with, along with the, the current staff that we have, we're pumped up. Yeah, and I, it sounds like you should be. And I think everybody that's ever worked with you or played for you uh, is pumped for you to be around. I don't think I've ever heard somebody say, you know, I hate Lovey Smith. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, that never happens. Why do you think that is the case? And how do you go about building a culture back in Houston? Because not too long ago, it was the Texans and the Colts that were running the AFC South. Yes, it and was. then they kind of went sideways. How do, you, how do you think you build that culture? And why do you think everybody says they love Lovey Smith? Well, I, I think it's always, a, it, to me, it's, about, it's been about relationships. You know, what have we gotten from sports in general? just relationships that you form throughout. And people want to be treated a certain way. You know, I was a player too, and uh, I wanted the coach to teach me, tell me what he wanted me to do in a civil way, and I would do it. So I, the, the, the coaching influences that I had in my life, they, that's how they held themselves, that's what I saw. And I know the players responded to it. You know, they want stern teachers, and I feel like that's what I, I am, and it has, has helped me throughout. Uh, the relationship, I have relationships with uh, everywhere I go. You know, players, there's former players there. And being in that fraternity is pretty special. Yeah, well, you've been around a long time dominating. AJ has a question for you. Yes. Yeah, I'm interested about your time when you, you went back to Illinois and you're, you're coaching there and now back in the NFL. <laughs> Can you coach guys in college the same way you coach in the NFL? Oh, AJ, I think, yes, you can. I mean, guys want to be taught. Uh, Teach them how, coach, show me how you want this to be done in a civil way. I think guys wanted that, you know, from being in the NFL. First, I was in college, and then I went to the NFL. And what I was told is don't change how you coach. This is how guys would like to be coached. 
and I did it. Didn't get a chance to come back to college. Uh, again, as I was saying, there was a different game then. And when I came back to the NFL this time, uh, it hadn't changed anything on how I did things. Uh, teach them, show them exactly how you want it to be done. There are some things that are non-negotiable. <laughs> and as far as how you win football games, that hadn't changed. I was just in a, doing an interview a little while ago, and, and guys, someone asked me about uh, cover two defense. It's been around since the beginning of time. It's not going anywhere, you know. So none of that has changed, and uh, it never will. Do you think the game's going to change, though? Because it got, like, real fast, and you experienced this in college. You said uh, not pass-oriented quarterback, a more run-oriented quarterback, and everybody was trying to get fast and speed, and defenses were getting smaller bodies in there because they go sideline to sideline. Now in the NFL, everybody's like, not everybody, but there's a lot of – Josh Allen's like six foot six. Oh, yeah. He's running powers now. They're like, And you look at the, the Ravens, they're running powers. I'm not saying that everybody's doing that, but it feels like the game is going to come full circle, which I think the guys who've been around a long time, it's probably going to favor. Do you view the game doing the same thing, or am I misreading it? Well, no, I don't think you're misreading it. And that part hasn't changed, and it will not. But I just look at the two Super Bowl participants. I mean, it was kind of the same basic ball I saw them playing at the end. Uh, you know, running games are still important. Uh, you still have to be able to pass the football. You talk about athletes like Josh Allen, and it, you, you need to match that on the other side of the football, you know, with the athletes that you put over there. We've always believed in having 11 athletes on the football field. So I think that matchup is still important. Uh, when I say it hadn't changed, of course it's changed some. It's evolved, uh, right? Is you it? know, I'm just looking at now, before every offensive snap, there's some type of movement. Well, you know, Mike Moritz had some type of movement a, a while back. That has been a part of it. Now that seems like everyone is doing it. But eventually you have movement and you get down to some basic ball that's being played. Okay, you came out and said that uh, old Dougie Davis Mills <laughs> is your guy. And we got a chance to just see him play. And then he came on the show and he just seemed like okay. a carbon copy of what you would hope a super nerd quarterback would be. <laughs> and he's played great football. <laughs> Last year, you came out and gave a, a massive bow to confidence for him, I assume. What did you see behind closed doors in that year where you're not the head coach, now you are the head coach, that made you think, like, hey, we got a guy here who can win football for us? What I saw, and I did get a chance to see it, you know, Davis at first wasn't starting quarterbacks. So he's going against the one defense each day. I got a chance to see him in every situation, uh, his demeanor. Uh, he's more of an athlete that people give him credit for. Four, seven, five guy. It's not hey, like he's a five, hey. three type guy. What are you running? What are you running? Uh, a lot slower than that. <laughs> <laughs> like most of us probably in this room. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, bingo, bingo. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Davis, he's smart. Yeah, he's a Stanford guy. He's smart. He can make all the throws. And he performed last year. So he came out early. I think if he was in this class, everybody would be mm. talking about Davis Mills. So we have him there, excited about his future. And we mentioned Pep Hamilton earlier. Of course, you know, Pep, he and Pep were able to work together last year. We have a head start on that. I'm just uh, excited about him taking us. Nick Casario had to answer questions this morning. It's partially probably our fault because we heard about this, but he was on the headset. So I think what we had learned through our research of this man is in New England, he was on the headset in the game in like situations and like that was a part of his job like hey this is going to be a part of it he moves into general manager he stayed in that world it has become a conversation whenever you and him talk in chit chat and you become the head coach what is the relationship like because everybody knows that's paramount that the head coach and the gm are together and i assume you guys are going to have, uh, evolve through the season when bullets are flying but what was it the initially like and what is it like now that you're the head coach and he's the gm well it was good you know for me to for us to get on the same page uh Talking about personnel, profile that we're looking for uh, at, at the defensive position last year. So got a chance to see Nick in a lot of different situations. But uh, Nick did what he thought was required uh, or that they had agreed upon, his role. Got it. He had been a part of kind of the coaching staff uh, at other places he's been. But, uh, you, know, it's a di you know, it's a different year. Uh, I've never had the GM involved like that on game day. Don't plan on doing that part. We'll all have roles, and uh, we have a coaching staff. I feel I can handle all of those situations on game day, and, of course, Nick is okay with that. you got to be pumped to get back in there, man. We're all excited to see what yeah. you do down there. Go ahead, Tashman. Coach, we've talked a little bit about how a couple coaches aren't at the Combine this week and how maybe you know the Combine now has changed a little bit. 
how important is it for you and like what will you be looking for this week because like you know some of the testing stuff is obviously maybe a little misleading but like what's more important for you is it watching the guys and seeing them in person or is it sitting down and talking to them and seeing if you know they're the kind of guys you would want to bring in well i think it's all of the above i think first off there's a lot you can get from the combine of being here uh but times have changed i mean there's a time, you know, I've been doing it a few years. <laughs> there, there's a time when uh, you couldn't get, you know, the video that you get now from, you know, what the pandemic kind of taught us a little bit, you don't have to be just on site for all things. You kind of look at this program that we have going on right now. Uh, so oh, you yeah. can uh, do it a, lo a different way. Um, some staffs aren't here at all. Some had their entire staff. And we have a combination of both. We have some of our staff here right now. But when you're new staff, there's a lot to be done back home. Most of our staff back home evaluating video uh, of, for free agency, of course, for the draft and all of that. What I get, what I think you can get, though, those meetings are still good. You get a chance to have guys come in and you see them, see the way they walk into the room and how they're – you can get some of that on video. But just that, you know, eye-to-eye -eye contact, there's, there's something different about that. My time in college, what I found, too, is that a lot of these guys I'm seeing now are recruited in college. Some of them didn't come to my school there, and I'm <laughs> not going to hold that against them. But uh, that has all been good. Also, watch the workouts for the combine are pretty important. Okay, so Sirianni over there shooting into mini hoops, okay? And we were talking to Daniel Jeremiah whenever people come in. How, how many minutes is it? And how do you try to break through? Do you just have to feel like it's just like a human? Like, do you ask any questions in there that can give you any piece of information? Is there any gotchas? Because we've heard that you're only allowed to ask certain things. You only have a certain amount of time. They're all prepped for sure for yes. that entire thing. How do you break through that? Well, there's a good question. And through the years, there's a lot of information. All right, we have 20 minutes. And what do you get from that? You know, everybody has a role. You know, one of our head scouts leads the, the conversation. And, of course, Nick participates. Uh, there's time. I talked about on game day how coaches move into more of a prominent role. And, uh, you know, personnel-wise, yes. they're taking a different – that's kind of how I look at it. Some of the things that I like to know from it. One thing is that I want to know – I ask most of the guys, what is your best game? If, if you want me to see exactly who you are instead of our scouts and what I think, tell me what game I should see to tell me exactly who you are. And then just listen to their story as much as anything. These are guys that you don't know. Yeah, you try to pick through all the, the like the rehearsed stuff, too. That's an interesting yeah. thing because that is the most important part. The culture of your locker room will always be so important. Everybody looks at these stats and analytics. The team is such it's, an important thing. That is an important thing. And, and just keep in mind, too, this is just initial step. This is like the first date. That, that, that's what it is. So you're just getting a little bit of information. You're going to get together a little bit later on. That's how I see uh, what we get from this combine. Yeah, are we worthy of having another date here? Eh, we'll find out. Because now there's multiple pro days for players. Mm -hmm. Because like last year, I think there was two different ones for Mac and then two for the mm – -hmm. and they just – I think the whole process has kind of opened up a little bit more. It has quite a bit. You know, Pat, some first dates you go and you say, hey, that's it. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> now, I have, there have been a couple of situations where the interview was that bad where you say, no – this ain't going to work. And there's some, like, you know, I met my wife on a blind date 43 years ago. We've been together every day since. Sometimes, hey, congrats. Wow. Love, love. Yes. Sometimes that first day you say, yeah, this is going to work. And uh, most of the time you right now, it's not the guys come in and they present themselves well. Um, the beard. The wife yes. loved the beard. And wife, you, it's, I, you led me right into it. <laughs> no, I'm like, most of the things when you've been married, you know, as long as I have, the wife is involved in quite a few things. You know, went on vacation once, and you let it go. You say, you know what, mm -hmm. I may keep this. And she said, you know, I kind of said that, but she said, you know, I like it, love you. So it's been with me since. Hey, whenever – now listen, I got to say if just because – but when you guys start winning down there in Houston, that no, fan, it, it's hey, if just like well, not if it's when, when yeah, yes. when, yeah, yes. when you start winning down there, that fan base is a passionate fan base. Bad they man. are loud. Pat, Those I beards been, will be for sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the other side. You're right. I mean, it's it's a Texas uh, team. 
So football is important, and I have seen it on the other side when we had it going. And we do. We plan on getting those days back, and the fans will come back, and it'll be rocking again. Hey, it was the loudest place I'd ever played in. I actually, I'm on the record saying that those Thursday night games against Houston, it was basically the AFC South was on the line. It was yeah. always Thursday night because we never had Thursday night games because all the conventions that happened here, so there's not enough hotels. We were always in Houston, and it always felt like the entire, and that place was fucking loud. I remember, like, headache loud. Love you. I remember it was like that <laughs> type of thing. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Coach. I mean, when you look at the Rams, you just won the Super Bowl. You a lot of the guys they had in there they ended up getting during the season. Uh, do you lean either way on how you build your team, whether it be kind of screw the pick side or like the Bengals, who's basically drafted every pillar that they have? I think you have to keep all options open. In an ideal world, yeah, you want to bring in the Davis Mills, get them, you know, come in as rookies there in your system entire, but you have to supplement it with free agency. Mm. And last year, you know, I don't know, maybe over 30 guys we brought in, and we're going to bring in some more. But I think they're – you know, guys, you just have to assume, know that that's the league and guys move around. And there's enough, to me, if you do your homework, there's enough guys for all of us to get exactly who we're looking for. So we're going to do it a combination. We're going to be heavily involved, hopefully, in free agency. But the draft is still kind of the – you know, that's where that foundation would be set. Hey, Lovey, the salary cap's fake now. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Since the last time, since, you know, when you, since the last time you were head coach and you did the thing and then you come back now, it's fake. It's yeah, fake. Hey, you have to be able to adjust with whatever's going on at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, free agency right now, like, you know, some of the players we had, you know, last year, some of, we have quite a few unrestricted guys, and I believe in them having an the opportunity to – to earn a, a certain living. But hopefully, you know, some of those guys are going to come back because uh, it's not just about this one country. I, I think our system and a lot of things can get guys paid in a lot of different ways. Oh, that's fantastic. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, Coach, you, talk, you said earlier that you can't run 40 that well anymore, but we saw earlier three-time All-American in high school, two-time All-American in college. When you're, when you're out there with – like we, saw, we see Vrabel likes to get hands on. You like to get hands on with the boys every once in a while, let them know you can still go. Well, you know, I, I do uh, – you know, I, it's not like I'm, you know, eating Twinkies every day. <laughs> you know, I, I, I try to stay in shape a little bit. And um, I do have a sports background. You know, sports are, are pretty important. But, you know, we have a lot of guys that respect the position. Yeah. And just, it's just kind of fun. They keep you young. And, uh, and, again, can't wait to get started again. I don't know if the Internet's right, but I believe you're 63 years old. Is that accurate? It's pretty good. <laughs> Man. Could you imagine? Yeah. I loved asking you earlier what your 40 time is. I didn't know if you were going to tell me like your, uh, when you were younger, 40 time. <laughs> the current one, a lot slower than that. And then the shit talk comes in. Uh, just like every other Everyone slow else, yeah. in, this, <laughs> in this room. No. Do, whenever you're coaching, it's a lot more than just the X's and O's. What is kind of your message to like younger players on how they can have success in the NFL? I asked Will Compton this yesterday because, you know, this combine's awesome. I was not invited to the combine. I know a lot of guys haven't, but... Like, the stats and analytics only tell you so much. What, through all the years you've been through football, what do you tell young guys, like, hey, this is why you're going to make it or why you're not going to make it? Do you have that answer? Well, yeah, because I, I think the, you know, I, I like uh, some of the, the stats behind players. Uh, I, I buy into fast guys that can run. Speed athletes, kills matchups. Speed kills, all of that. But still it comes down, though, you know, I'm from a, I'm a small town guy. Just some of the basic things on hard work. Hard work still kind of wins. Most guys aren't the most talented around, but if you just put in the time, you, you can see the benefits from it. It always comes down to that. And you can't, most of the time, most of it you can't get at the combine. And maybe not on some of the video, but just getting that guy who has a little bit more, that wants it a little bit more. And those guys normally end up on top steel, you know. You said earlier, whenever you're talking about the difference between the college game and the NFL game, you're like, in college, you can't just focus on football. In the NFL, I can just watch film until I, I don't. Yeah. You're just a film junkie. It's, yes, yeah. absolutely. Always been happened. like that. Always been like that. You know, you kind of figure out early you're not going to play football forever. So the that part of the game has always been a big deal to me. And nowadays, with modern technology, anything that you want, anyone you want to see is just a click away from. It's at your disposal at any time. And the college, college game is different. You know, you don't have a lot of time. But the NFL, you can grind. And the best players do grind. Most of the Hall of Famers, you know, guys that were really good at their position, they grind. Yeah. People, all, that. people don't see all that, though. You know, they forget. No, that. they don't. Yeah. And it's it. 
you know, what does it say? What you do in the dark will come to the light. You will be exposed, however. So there's some quote that will go in there. And it's like all these people that have such great success, I was like, oh, well, they do this move good or they do this move good. It's like, do you know how hard and how long they had how to long? work on yes. that particular move to happen? It's like the overnight success that is probably two decades in the making for people. They're just learning about it. And when I, when I talk about old school, that, that's what it's about. That's not trick them. Eventually, you can only trick people so much. And it comes down to what you really know and how much time you have actually put in. Uh, That's a trait. AJ, go ahead, pal. I love you. In, in your whole time, like when you were at Illinois and, and then you come back to the league, did you ever was there ever a time when you thought that you may not get another chance to be a head coach in the NFL again? Well, you know, I've been pretty uh, – a chance that that wouldn't happen, yes. And I would have been okay with that. You know, last year I wasn't, I wasn't a head football coach. And um, – and I went into a different role. I think I'm a foot, just a football junkie at, yeah. at heart, and I love the game. If I had never gotten back in the seat, I would have been okay, would have been pretty happy. But at the same time, I, I thought that I had more to give still. And there's unfinished business, you know, too. I mean, uh, it's got to be a great feeling to raise up that oh. Lombardi uh, trophy. Uh, you know, uh, it's got to be a great feeling to do that. I haven't done it. <laughs> and uh, you're, you're right. And I, I haven't. So that is a driving force. But, again, if it hadn't happened, fine. But I'm glad to get an op another opportunity. I heard that when you become a head coach, it's just a, f a bunch, a lot more coming across the desk than whenever you're a coordinator or a position coach. Yes. What, did that – you said there's only 32 of these jobs. So when you're offered it, like, obviously, it's an honor and you're going to take it. But did you have to think about what's all going to come with being a head coach in the NFL again or no? No. no you're prepared I, for it, ready no, for it. I, you know, again, I, it, it helps that – you know, 2004, when I first uh, went to Chicago, maybe a little, didn't know then, but I kind of knew what the position entailed. And it's one of the, it doesn't get much better than this. So no hesitation at all. Want another opportunity to do it and glad it came. Um, whenever you think about Deshaun Watson uh, being a member of the Texans, when you get there, yes. it's already, already, he, he wants out. I don't know if you were there before the 20 accusations or – Whenever, because people forget that before the 20 accusations, he wanted out of it. There was a chance he was going to the Jets or the Eagles. It was a massive story. And then all of a sudden, a much more real massive story came into it, and there was no exemption list. So all year, it was kind of like hanging over the Texans organization. Still is, by the way, still at this point. Still there? How do you, and uh, we're supposed to get an answer, I guess, April 1. So it's less than a month from now, allegedly, about whether it'll be like uh, jail time, I think, potential, or if it'll be just move on to a different team. How do you, how do you guys, how, last year you weren't the head coach, but that seems like something very difficult to balance with everybody in the locker room because there's relationships with Deshaun in the locker room, let alone there's like $30 million off the salary cap. There's expectations. I guess there's more opportunity. But what is the messaging to the team about something that just has been looming over that is very serious, by the way, very, very serious. Well, how, what is the messaging you think to everybody? Well, I, yeah, it can be hard, I guess, if, if, if you let it be. But for me, I think most guys in a locker room, uh, there are whole outs. There's a business side of it. There's injuries. So you're a professional. you got to come to work every day and do your job. Uh, and normally situations like this that happen that are, that are there, in time, they'll take care of itself. It, and that, that's how I looked at it. And in time, it would take care of itself. Um, and hopefully, not hopefully, and that's the case. I think most of the guys are doing that. Life has to go on. Eventually, Deshaun is going to play somewhere, our place or some other place. And if he's not at our place, players at, at, you know, for the Houston Texans have to go on and play football. So that's what we've done. That's the NFL in general. Things change from day to day. And I'm going to go back. Time takes care of all things, and it normally works out for the best. Oh, uh, that's a – hey. Sounds like you're the coolest dude of all time. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with that beard coming out with a little Texas, uh -huh. in, Texas in there. So much wisdom. Uh, well, good luck with everything in Houston. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for stopping by. We thought that place was on fire last year. Like, it seemed like from outside looking in, that place was just on fire. But it's the NFL, so that's going to happen. But yes. those games show up, and you guys were able to somehow focus amongst it all. Excited to see what you do this year and another year. There. Yeah, that's the case. You know, it's the difference between perception and reality a lot of times. And uh, that wasn't the case. There were some things going on. 
but uh, some things I think we can get through. Well, I cannot wait to see the Lovey Smith led Houston Texans yeah. live appreciate in it. studio. Great man in the middle of the combine. We appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. Lovey Smith. Yeah. Yeah.